Hello, this is Dr. Amin Manashi, Retina Specialist in Manashi Eye Clinic in Aleppo, Syria. I am presenting the course of OCT for macular diseases. In the previous presentation, I discussed hereditary diseases. In this presentation, I will discuss OCT's clinical applications in miscellaneous diseases, including pseudophagic cystoid macular edema, cystoid macular edema related to intraocular inflammation, pathological changes, post-trauma, and android streaks. OCT is the gold standard to diagnose cystoid macular edema post cataract surgery, which appears as increased macular thickness and intraretinal hyporeflective cystic changes with loss of foveal pit and with or without subretinal fluids. Sometimes cystoid macular edema may cause clinical diagnostic confusion between pseudophagic cystoid macular edema and other retinal vascular diseases in high risk patients. It may require additional imaging modalities such as fundus imaging, fluorescein angiography, and OCT angiography. However, OCT can reveal unique structural changes that may help differentiate, such as increased reflectivity of inner tissues and inner hemorrhages that are the hallmark of macular edema related to retinal vein occlusion. In contrast, non-empty cystic changes and heart exudates may refer to diabetic macular edema along with a spongy-like appearance. OCT is very useful in revealing vitromacular interface abnormalities, such as the presence of vitromacular traction or epiretinal membrane with increased macular thickness and interretinal cystic formation. Can be associated with cases of post complicated cataract surgery with incarcerated vitreous strands at the wound or cases pre existing vitromacular interface abnormalities. However, the cases of pseudophagic cystoid macular edema associated with traction may indicate pars plana vitrectomy to relieve the traction. OCT is important in clinical practice to evaluate post-treatment efficacy, as in this example, there is increased central macular thickness with intraretinal hyporeflective intraretinal cystic formation and loss of foveal pit. The next cross-section shows resolved macular edema and intraretinal cystic changes post-treatment with a supracoroidal triamcinolone acetonate injection. In cystoid macular edema related to intraocular inflammation, it may show similar characteristics to uh, pseudophagic cystoid macular edema such as increased macular thickness and intraretinal cystic changes with or without subretinal fluids. However, cystoid macular edema related to intraocular inflammation may be associated with increased reflective dots in the vitreous due to intravitreal inflammatory cells. Sometimes it can be combined with vitreal macular interface abnormalities such as a peritoneal membrane. In intraocular inflammation cases associated with occlusive vasculitis, it may show increased reflectivity of the inner retinal tissues due to ischemic changes. OCT is essential to monitor the progression of macular changes related to intraocular inflammation. As in this case of cystoid macular edema related to pars planitis, showing increased macular thickness with intraretinal cystic formation. Please note the reduced quality of the OCT scan due to vitriol. The next cross section shows post treatment with a supracoroidal injection of triamcinolone acetonate resolution of edema and intravitreal inflammatory cells clearance. On the other hand, this is a case of Paget disease showing vitromacular abnormalities with active inflammation and was treated systematically without any ocular intervention. Within one month, the tangential traction progressed, causing a full thickness macular hole with intraretinal cystic changes. After ocular trauma, a contusion of macular tissue may occur forming Berlin edema, which is presented as increased reflectivity of overlying retinal tissue and may end up with the disruption of the ellipsoid zone and RPE atrophy and pigmentation. Trauma 
can cause a defect in different levels and there would be disruption of both the interdigitation zone and ellipsoid zone or the defect extends to the external limiting membrane. Solar retinopathy can be presented with a focal disruption in the ellipsoid zone and outer retinal tissues with intact other retinal tissues without any changes in retinal contours. However, in acute cases, it may show increased reflectivity over the focal disruption due to inflammatory tissue reaction. Choroidal rupture may show choriocapillaries RPE protrusion in pyramid shape, causing discontinuity of RPE. Some choroidal rupture cases may be presented with concave contours with a wide area of external limiting membrane, ellipsoid zone, and RPE Brooks membrane loss. In acute cases, this protrusion may combine with subretinal blood which appears as subretinal hyperreflective fluids with the smooth borders. Some choroidal rupture cases got complicated with subretinal choroidal neovascularization which may be presented with subretinal fluids and subretinal hyperreflective mass. As in this case, there is a choroidal rupture in the form of RPE protrusion in the pyramid shape, causing discontinuity of RPE and subretinal hyperreflective mass presenting subretinal choroidal neovascularization with subretinal fluids and blood and intraretinal cystic changes. OCT is very useful in assessing a traumatic macular hole which will show a full thickness macular defect with or without intraretinal cystic changes and elevated edges. OCT can accurately measure traumatic hole size as a smaller hole size have a better chance for spontaneous closure as in this case of an 18 years old boy presented with a traumatic macular hole and within the six months of follow-up there was a spontaneous closure of the hole. In angioid streak, an alternation of Brooks membrane with subretinal fibrosis and atrophy. However, when angioid streak got complicated with choroidal neovascularization, it will have subretinal hyperreflective mass with increased retinal thickening and intraretinal fluids with or without subretinal fluids. This cross section for the same case post-treatment with intravitreal injection of VEGF blockade agents showing resolved cystic changes and macular edema with subretinal fibrosis. By this, I conclude the course of OCT clinical applications for macular diseases where I tried my best to scratch the surface of OCT findings and applications in a nutshell. I hope you find this information useful in your daily clinical practice. I hope to see you soon in my next courses. Thank you for listening.